morning, everyone. We are at Karen Clark Gallery in downtown Eugene. It's a beautiful day, and I'm super excited, not just because we have this incredible, masterful Tom Blodgett show on, but we have a special guest speaker to go in depth on a number of these really incredible works. Today we have Ken O'Connell, who is an artist. We actually featured his retrospective earlier this summer. And he's also Professor Emeritus from the University of Oregon Department of Art. And he's a wonderful person and he's here today to help us out to go a little deeper into these works. So Ken, thank you so much for being here. I will pass this big microphone off to you. Thank you, thank you, Karen. This is a lithographic print by Tom Blodgett uh, that he did when he was in graduate school. And I'll go through five of the works that are in the gallery here. This is the oldest one done in, in the 60s, early 60s. I met Tom in 1962, 58 years ago. He had started his work at graduate uh, at the University of Oregon. And I met him when he was painting his canvases black. It was unusual for an artist to start out with a black canvas. Most artists start out with a white canvas, but Tom loved darkness and you'll see darkness in his work throughout the exhibit. So if I can go through this, print, I'll talk a little bit about areas that the self port of course, was done with the crayon on a lithographic stone that's made of limestone. And then he's doing cross hatching. He's doing parallel lines, curved lines or straight lines, and then crossing over those to produce different levels of gray. But you also see in areas where he scratched through or scraped through the crayon and produced a white line. And we'll see this in all of his work that he, he loves to work with white over dark. And then in this picture, we see uh, a child here in a swing in the upper left-hand corner, and then the head of a salmon here, uh, Ann Fuller, who is uh, the curatorial of Tom's work, um, is the one who gave me some information about this print and uh, told me this was a salmon's uh, head that he uses fish and other animals in his uh, work. There's an older person here in the lower part and it's sort of scraped out by, uh, again, the use of white line over the, the dark areas. So um, another thing that Anne mentioned was that this halo, Tom has sort of drawn a halo. I saw it as the frame of a mirror, but there are several pieces where he's put a halo around his head, uh, sort of signifying a, a future state that he hoped to have, I suppose. So we'll go on now to the second piece that I'm gonna talk about. And this is the piece that's featured on the, uh, the invitation card or the announcement card of the exhibit. It's a, a piece that Tom did in a series of kind of a, a noir uh, based on like the mysteries that were very popular in black and white films in, in filmmaking. And he loved those films and he, he kind of had a series of, of stories and, and uh, episodes that were done through uh, drawing and painting. And this one uh, is called actually the um, Deadly Quick Touch. And um, Tom did sketchbooks, many sketchbooks, and Ann Fuller was able to find this preliminary sketch uh, where he has the title of it, The Deadly Quick Touch, and it shows the woman with her head facing us, and the man's uh, face is similar to what it was in the final version. Also, another part of this is the, um, uh, we'll get a close-up of that. Another part of this is the, these two figures standing here in this kind of archway silhouette almost like a, um, uh, a wedding set situation. And here's the preliminary sketch for that done in another sketchbook. And uh, in this uh, sketchbook, he, he wrote things. In fact, sometimes you'll see he writes on the drawing. Here it says, uh, dedicated to Sarah, 1984. Uh, sometimes he writes a dedication or the name of the person or uh, elements that Um, elements that, that he wants to remember in the, in the uh, drawing. Now, also I mentioned his use of white. Notice here that we have primarily a dark image, but he has lots of white uh, where he's drawn like a carnation on the fellow's suit, uh, white in the lace uh, around the woman's dress, uh, white in the background here, and then white lines over here. This is similar to what we think of Mark Toby's, what he called white writing, where he would do white, um, lines over a drawing, over a painting. Uh, I did find that in the preliminary drawing, he wrote a sort of a poem saying, lovers reunited, not too late, to each other spoke of crumbling light, 
in a dying lake. And so uh, I see these as the two lovers speaking, and then perhaps this is the water, the dying lake, because we have these figures, almost mummified figures, that are reflected in this lower area, which is sort of like a water thing. And we'll see water in other works by Tom. Okay, we're gonna go now over to one that um, is titled uh, For Michelle, and, um, or Michelle at 20 uh, is the actual title. Tom did this in 1989. Michelle um, uh, Patterson, I believe is, Patrick. oh, Patrick. M Michelle Patrick is who we think this is, and, uh, but nobody really sort of knows what, uh, where she is or what happened to her. Okay, in this one I have to talk about his use again of the eraser. Um, and mention how Tom used to say the, that what he takes away in a drawing is as important as what he lays down in a drawing. So here's an eraser I have in my hand. And so what he would do, say he was working in the hair, he wanted to bring highlights in, he'd just go shh, shh. He'd take his eraser and pull it out. Other times he'd use the eraser to give a lighter shade to a, a shade that he thought was too dark. And then here's a really magnificent part of this drawing, which is this wonderful light streaming through her hair, producing a shadow on her cheek. And if you look at that closely, you can see that he's put in some light gray uh, with, the, with the crayon, and then he's gone in with the eraser in different angles. One thing that's amazing about Tom's facility with drawing is the different angles and the different movements that he's made in this. I mean, you have parallel lines again, as I mentioned, for shading in her dress or, or scarf, and, but then you have these calligraphic lines in the hair and around the head. And also his use of shading. Again, shadows under the eyes, shadows under the nose, shadows under the upper lip light on the lower lip and then shadows underneath that lower lip and then shadows on the neck. So building the structure out of darkness and then using again lightness to uh, bring in uh, further elements of that shape. Now the uh, fourth piece that I wanted to talk about is a pastel piece where um, this was done in, later in life, about three years prior to his death. And uh, it was one of the uh, first pieces he did in this new studio. He inherited some money in the last part of his life and was able to build really a really nice studio while before that he was working in, in very humble settings. Anyway, this is one of three large pastels that Anne refers to as his, some of his landscape series. Now notice the huge, again, large amount of dark, really black, and then this intense blue above and this kind of landscape with this sort of uh, niche within it. He, uh, he, was, drew, he drew this in a small room, even though he built a huge studio for himself, he was more comfortable at first in, in a small room. So he's in a smaller space drawing. But notice again his use, not this case of white, but uh, although there is a little white, he's using uh, colored lines that are, that are just contrasting with this large, massive, energetic uh, landscape powerful and, and full of uh, uh, energy in the lines. And if I draw your attention to the lines that none of these lines follow any, they're not parallel, they're irregular, they have different twists to them so that he, and, and that brings a lot of energy, I think, into his pieces. Now the show that I encourage you to come and see if you haven't is it was full of all sorts of things. I'm just pointing out five of them, but uh, they're worth a close look because Tom uh, worked on these things for hours, sometimes days, maybe sometimes weeks, and they're full of layers of which we can only see, of course, the last few layers that he did. Now, this is the last one I'm talking about. It's, it's untitled, although it, it's developed the title or the name Pond because it has a sense of water in it. It's an unusual one in that um, it, it has this, it's a landscape, but it's very abstract, and it's very mysterious. And we have what look like tree trunks and we look like reflections of trees. In fact, here you have sort of um, a, a fog, a kind of a mystic fog with this electric blue at the base of it. And uh, Tom was really uh, quite, quite good with color, even though he loved to work with all these dark areas. And you'll see in this just these beautiful delicate greens and blues and, and yellows that are woven into the uh, what we could call a reflective water part of this pond. And then in the upper part, you have some of those uh, colors, but in a little bit thicker and, and larger form uh, as we go to the top. Well, this is a, a, a quick overview of some of these pieces, and there are many more. The show has a lot of portraits, 
uh, not only portraits of Tom himself, but portraits of other people. And uh, sometimes, like I say, on the bottom, he'll have a phrase or a comment uh, that um, relates to the person. But I wanted at this point to say, um, I'm, I'm thankful I was able to talk a little bit about Tom. I, I knew him over, off and on over the years. And um, uh, I, at one time I visited him and he uh, was telling me about all the deer that came into his backyard. This is when he was living in a very humble, broken down shack really. And um, he would uh, go out every morning and uh, feed the deer or, or sketch the deer. And he had these sketchbooks full of beautiful drawings of the deer. And at that point I went to the Northwest Review and uh, asked them if they would publish these drawings in their section on art. It was a literary magazine, but they always had an art section. And Anne has brought by a copy of that Northwest Review for you to look at if you'd like to see. And it's called The Magical Deer Drawings uh, by Tom. At this point, I'll take any questions or any comments or if uh, are there anything that uh, people are sending on the internet. Otherwise, I'll kind of just make a few uh, concluding comments. Karen, are, are, we, are we good? Okay. Uh, we're good. Well, then, then let me invite you again to come down. The show's up in, uh, until Halloween, and so you have a, a, a good amount of time to come down here, but uh, don't miss it. Here's Karen, uh, Karen to talk to you. Yeah, I just wanted to thank you all for tuning in, and uh, I, we did get some comments that the sound was better, so I think we're starting to figure these things out. Thanks for bearing with us. Thanks to my assistant, Jordan Stanaway, for filming this and, and figuring out all the technology um, that I'm struggling with. But anyway, um, I just wanted to remind you the gallery opens at noon today, so we're about to unlock the door. We'll be down here until 5.30. It's a beautiful day. Come down and look at these interesting drawings um, and, and look through the, uh, we have this portfolio that's kind of a scrapbook of his life and, and, and past works. And it's a very compelling work. Um, we're also open tomorrow, which is Saturday, and we're open 10 to four on Saturdays. So hope to see you soon and thanks for tuning in. And thank you, Ken O'Connell.